just thought I'd warn some of you folks about something I got really wrapped up in that I uh, guess you could say I feel like I was a little bit conned. It's the Joe Newman motor. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Joseph Newman motor, but Joseph Newman is a gentleman. He's been making claims for quite a few years now that his motors are capable of producing more energy output than input. Now, if this were true, it could revolutionize the world because we could have motors that run on their own energy. And he was getting a lot of media attention for a while. In fact, he was on the Johnny Carson show. Um, I, from what I recall, he, he generated the greatest listener response of any guest that Johnny Carson's ever had in the history of his show. And some of the things that Joe was, was doing was he was pr producing these huge motors that had massive quantities of wire in them. And <clears throat> they would... Um, he would call out all kinds of engineers to test his motors, and a lot of them were baffled and, and seemed to believe that his motors actually did what he claimed they did. Now, what I what I wanted to do is talk about some of the results I had trying to reproduce his results. And while some of some of his results were intriguing, I I saw a side to his um, personality, I guess you could say, that revealed that he's appears to be less than honest when it comes to talking about his motor and demonstrating what they're capable of. Um, first, I want to talk about one of the motors that I made. I, I wish I had a video of it to show you, but I've got some other motors here which I can do some little tricks with just to show you some of the do's and don'ts if you're experimenting with his ideas. Here's a coil that a friend of mine had wound. It's a great big coil here. and He had a couple of these and magnets inside it. and Anyway, um, one of the things that confused me when I first started playing with Joe Newman's ideas was I didn't know how to measure power. I didn't realize that power can't be looked at in terms of amperage, and it can't be looked at in terms of voltage. It has to be looked at in terms of voltage times amperage. What I mean is this. When I first wound, made my first Newman motor, it consisted of 30 pounds of number 30 gauge wire and a whole lots of magnets inside of it is my rotor. Now, I remember how excited I was when I completed this thing because it seemed like it was producing an awful lot of torque for very low input current. In fact, uh, when I was done making this thing, I used to challenge my friends to hold onto the shaft of this motor, and as I would hook it up to a, a, a charged capacitor bank, they couldn't hold the shaft. It would, it would uh, have so much torque they couldn't hold it. And I was all excited because this thing was using like, I don't remember the exact figure, it was like one one hundredth of an amp or something like that. And I was demonstrating it to all these people and I thought I was onto something so big and one day I called up a friend that's an electrician. He came over and he saw my motor and he said, well, I can see it's using one one hundredth of an amp to run this thing, but how much voltage are you applying? And I said to him, well, what's that matter? Uh, what's the voltage matter? It's, it's only using one one hundredth of an amp. Isn't that what counts? He said, no you got to apply, multiply your voltage times your current to calculate how much power is going into this thing. You can't just look at current and you can't just look at voltage. Now I know that's the ABCs of electronics for you guys that have been into it for a while, but I didn't get it at the time. And I can see a lot of people that are experimenting with Joe's ideas, they don't get it either. In fact, they're, they're overly impressed with some of Joe's test results on his motors because he'll turn these huge flywheels and pump a little water and make these outlandish claims that his motors are you know putting out a thousand times their input power and all this ridiculous stuff and um, I just thought I'd do a couple little demonstrations here to, to give you an idea what's possible with a more conventional DC motor I've got this motor here it uh, comes off of a conveyor belt it's a big DC motor now this motor believe it or not can be hooked to a watch battery and it'll still run. I can also hook it to this used AA battery I happen to have in my hand here. And I could run this thing with one and a half volts and it draws about 100 milliamps. Just so you can see, there's no no trickery here. I don't know if you can tell this thing's rotating, but it but it is rotating. And it's it's running off this little battery right here. Now I used to have a platform on this motor so that kids could sit on it and they'd go in circles and it, they loved it, it was great fun. 
But believe it or not, I could, I could make the kids turn in circles using a single AA battery. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people don't realize you can get an awful lot of torque out of a small DC motor. Now I've got another DC motor here. This came off of an electric scooter I used to drive all over town. And I was told this motor is, I think it's, somebody mentioned it's probably only about 60% efficient. It's a DC motor. And uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because Joe's doing demonstrations using his DC motors, which are huge in size. And everybody's impressed because he's able to turn this huge flywheel. Well, I guarantee you, I can take this motor right here. I can hook it to a merry-go-round at a park. If this was li lined with a little rubber rim around it, I could touch to the side of the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round would turn on a single AA battery. Um, it's it's really intriguing what Joe did. I mean, he wound that 8,000-pound coil on one of his motors, and he got this tremendous spark off the commutator. And um, it, it looked like he was producing tons of output energy. Look, I don't know if he did or he didn't. All I know is if you look at his latest test results on a lot of the demonstrations he's doing for the public, something is terribly wrong with him. You have to understand what power is, though, before you can really judge. Now, now look, if I wanted to prove to you that I had a motor that made free energy, you know the simplest way I could do it? Simplest way I could do it, I could take this motor, when it turns, if this motor's putting out all this extra energy, I could hook it to the shaft on this motor, which also works as a generator. I could feed these wires back in, into itself, and I would have a uh, perpetual motion machine, right? I mean, if, you, if you've got a motor that's, let's say, uh, putting out double the energy as what it uses, take some of that energy, feed it back into a second motor, and run the first motor. But Joe doesn't do that. He's always got batteries in his motors, and he makes all kinds of interesting claims as to why he has to have motors. I'm sorry, batteries, but, um, you know, jo Joe has inspired a lot of people to experiment, and I think that's great. I'm one of them, and I got a lot of benefit from it. But as far as making a free energy motor, or a motor that has greater output than input, I don't think he's been able to do it. I, I will admit I'm, I'm a little bit baffled by some of the early videos I saw where he, it showed him charging up some dead AA batteries as it ran a motor. But I'm not sure that that's from the, the effect that Joe thinks it, it is. I'll give an example of what I mean. I can take a AA battery, I can put it in the oven when it's low. If I put it up at a fairly high temperature, not high enough to make it explode, but high enough to break down whatever it is that uh, causes batteries to quit working, that battery regenerates itself somewhat. And if you look at the demo do Joe does with that motor um, where it charged up the AA batteries, you'll see that he's got a he's got a big magnet inside this coil. He spins it by hand, which is going to generate some electricity to begin with. And I'm sure it's producing a big back spike. Perhaps that back spike is regenerating the battery a little bit. And it it's... Um, you know, having the same effect as putting AA batteries in an oven where you can regenerate them a little bit. I don't fully understand. Again, what I'm going by are the results that Joe shows people presently. If there's something to it, then he's hiding something at the same time. Um, I should, I should, probably should talk about all the variations of this motor I made. I had motors with elaborate commutators uh, I had this thing rigged up here. Believe it or not, this has about 14 miles of wire on it. It's a very fine gauge wire, and it it was fun to play with. It requires a very high voltage to run because of the fact that it's um, got such a thin wire on it and so many turns. But I've I've spent so many hours with this stuff, hundreds of dollars and hundreds of hours, and it's great fun. And I encourage everybody to experiment. But hey. Uh, do your homework. Find out what power is. One amp times one volt equal one watt. You can't look at the amperage alone. You can't look at uh, the, the volts, voltage alone. you got to look at the whole figure. All right. Thanks a lot for listening.